Uh, hello and welcome to the very first session of the Telegraph Food and Drink Festival. Today we'll be speaking to Chef James Cochran and learning how to make the perfect fried chicken. Uh, my name is Tomei Morris Swan. I'm a writer for Telegraph Food. Uh, I've interviewed James several times. Uh, I've eaten at his restaurant 1251 in North London, so I know just how good his chicken is. Um, today he's going to be showing us how to make his butternut fried chicken, how to get the most tender meat, crunchiest batter. Um, firstly, hi James, how are you doing? Yeah, really, really good. Um, looking forward to showing you my, my signature dish. So could you tell us where you are? Uh, I'm at 1251 Upper Street Angel. Uh, we've been here now for about two years or so. Um, and my signature dish is my Jamaican jerk butter milk chicken. Great. And um, before we get into the cooking, could you tell me a bit about your background in, in cooking and restaurants? And also how this became your signature dish yeah sure so um so originally from a seaside town called whitstable in kent um and my kind of parents really kind of pushed me into education and, and quite the forefront of it all and from an early age from about the years of eight years old and yeah i wanted to be a chef um and i worked at an institution now called weaver's oyster buy in whitstable where i kind of learned my kind of trade in seafood then um i went to a place called reeds in faversham uh, very classical kind of French, did two years there and then I thought I'd come to London thinking that I was a big timer but I got to pick my place pretty quickly and uh, I went to the infamous place called the Ledbury where I did like five years there but I kind of relearned really my kind of skill. I think kind of now like all my kind of tricks and trade does come from the Ledbury and then I went to kind of semi retirement. I went to a place called uh, the Howard Arms in Fulham and then um at that time, like probably about 10 years ago, the pop-up scene kind of kicked off. And um, I did a pop-up with my four housemates it's called Campbell Love. And we did like North, South, East, West London. Really good fun, man. Like there was no stress at having your own restaurant. Uh, like four of your best mates going around, really kind of showcasing my food. And I thank them a lot for that. And then um, I had a couple spots called Fix and James Cochran EC3. And then... Um, I basically, I was doing a pop up at the time at a place called the Steam Passage on Upper Street. And um, that's now my business partner, Dan Henry. And we kind of formed 1251 from there. And really, three things about the restaurant really is um, super accessible and affordable, really good music. And I kind of bring my roots. So I'm half Scottish, half in Ascension, and originally from Whitstable. And I tried to bring all the plates and together, but I don't kind of mishmash the flavors. Great. So, James, over okay, to you. Perfect. Uh, um, fried chicken. Okay, so if you're ever going to be cooking the bunny milk chicken or Jamaican bunny milk chicken, you basically want to brine the chicken, okay? What the brining does is the salt in it basically breaks down the fibers in the chicken and also, as well, leaves the flavor. So, for example, you don't have to do Jamaican jerk bunny milk chicken. If you've got any store cover spices that you want to kind of chuck in there, the main thing you want to do is whatever you brine it in, you brine it in 10% of the weight of it. So for example, okay, if we've got um, a kilo of chicken, I'm basically going to put that in a litre of water with 100 grams of salt. What you do basically is water, salt, bring that to the boil, let that go completely cold. Then basically the chicken, we are used thigh, basically, I think the best part of the chicken, basically um, brine that in the solution for like two hours. So basically what I've done is I've basically brined that literally with salt, water, and that is it. I'm not putting any jerk spice in there because we're going to add that a bit later on. So first off, let me just put some gloves on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, give me a second. And... So is there two hours? Is there time you can leave it in brine? Any longer, then you're gonna, you're gonna no, have salt okay. to penetrate into chicken and you're gonna have overseas and chicken. So, I mean, this dish really ideally is for me is, is, is a, an absolute comfort dish. I mean, um, the reason I came up with this dish is back like in the early 90s, my mum took me to Brixton for the first time, um, before we gentrified, obviously. And um, my mum thought it was integral for me to really understand my West Indian culture. So my mum used to go to Brixton Market and get her hair done there. And in the lunch break, she went and got me some fried chicken. I remember just having this fried chicken was absolutely ridiculous. And believe it or not, it was from Morley's. And from that day, it kind of stuck with me. And the funny thing about it is, is 
why the people love this dish so much is because it has a nostalgia, comforting feel about it. And I think when people come to the restaurant, kind of get that first bite of the bite of chicken, don't know what it does, sets you in that kind of mood. Yeah, that brings back some memories, maybe if you're your fried chicken, if you've been out on a if you've been out on a piss up, or like literally you've hung over in the morning, or just out of fried chicken, basically. And then um, it's my favorite dish on the menu, you know. It would change the menu monthly, but for somehow it's always my favorite dish. So anyway, I'm gonna crack all this basically. So the chicken, okay. Um we've got Couple of questions. Yes, what fine. pieces of chicken are you using? Is it high? Yeah. And uh, the ratio of, of so water. I've got a kilo of chicken here. Okay, I would get two kilos, two liters of water, and two hundred grams of salt. Boil the salt and water together until it's dissolved. Then let that go completely cold. Then pour that over your chicken thighs, and basically let that brine for two hours then drain that off, and then the next process is what I'm going to show you now, okay? Cool? So basically, cutting up the chicken thighs into make sure even sized pieces, just purely because you know it's going to cook evenly. I won't cut it all up because we're going to do a small portion today. Sweet. So I'll just take another piece here. And again, the great thing about this, so it's all accessible to get from your, um, from your supermarket. So super easy. Okay, next. Let me just have my gloves off, sorry. Okay, so think about this, okay? We have just brined the chicken, correct? And we're tenderizing that. Now we're gonna put it in buttermilk. What buttermilk is basically is sour milk. Again, there's a natural bacteria in there. Again, it's gonna break down the chicken even more. So now we're double tenderizing it. Okay, cool. So what I've got here is I've got did you, did you know if you didn't find buttermilk or sort of uh, put um, Again, you can. sour cream okay, or anything like that? Does it have to be bacteria, yogurt you can use, or sour cream as well? So that's totally that's totally fine. And again, like I say, it's again, this is my signature dish. But like I said, you've got anything in the store cupboards. It could be Korean red pepper spice. It could be curry powder, tandoori, paprika, garlic powder. Just right. play around with it. It's entirely up to you. Do you know what I mean? Um, so basically, the ratio, okay, of chicken to buttermilk. Two parts chicken to one part buttermilk. So I've got a kilo of chicken here, and I've got 500 mils of buttermilk. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to put the chicken into the buttermilk. But before I do that, I've got my jerk spice, okay? So again, you could just go to the mm -hmm. supermarket, and you could pick up jerk seasoning. But again, we make our own blend here that I've basically got like... 15 to 18 different spices in, going from smoked paprika to onion powder, garlic powder, thyme, black pepper, cayenne, pimento, cinnamon, nutmeg, and that I've kind of created my own kind of spice. And again, literally, the spice goes in. And what I've done here is again, it's salt. Basically, you don't need to add the salt into it, okay? Just let you know, because people will do this, okay? You don't need to add the salt into it. Okay, because you've already brined it, so ignore that completely. Okay, cool. Literally, jerk spice in. Okay. Bosh, cool. I'm literally going to give that a mix around. And the amount of jerk seasoning that I've done in there, okay, is 10% to the weight of chicken, okay? Cool. Are there any spices that don't work? Because you say you can play um, around with it, but is there anything we should I avoid? I mean, it just depends, really, kind of like of how much you want to go into making your own jerk spice. I guess if you understand that like, the classic kind of flavors that go in there, then you're gonna then you're gonna use your own ratio to it. You know what I mean? You're gonna maybe okay, you may do a test and think, okay, I want to add some more cayenne pepper into it. Because every single palette is different to everyone else, correct? But I think this one here is a winner. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm super happy with it. Sorry, excuse me, let me check another glove on. Again, okay, it's so chicken in, as you can see. And again, should we give that a good mix around? Sweet. And then ideally, you want to leave that for around about, I mean, the longer the better. I mean, you can leave it for 48 hours or you can go straight away. Again, I'm still going to get the flavor coming through now. 
So I'm going to be using straight away. Okay, cool. And then, yes, yeah, sorry, again, leave you it in the fridge up for two hours. We go straight away or leave it 48 hours. The longer you leave it, the more that spice is going to bleed into it. But again, you've already tenderized it the first time around by brining it. So you know you're going to get juicy chicken. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to switch up a little bit for a second. Imagine that's been marinated for two hours. Okay, sweet. Let me get rid of the board. Yep. And then it comes to coating the chicken, okay? And then basically what we've got here is semolina and tapioca starch. Um, I find that you get a lot better crunch on it. And again, this is super accessible now to do to get in the supermarket. You, usually now you have your Asian kind of oil that you can kind of get this off. And for me, you get a beautiful crunch on it. And also, if you are gluten intolerant, you can use polenta flour. Okay, cool. And use tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is gluten free. Mm -hmm. So you're winning on this part. And the ratio to this is two parts semolina, one part tapioca starch. Cool. And again, just mix that together. And then I've got the fryer set to 180 degrees. Cool. And this is probably going to take about five to six minutes on there. Okay. But again, whatever happens, when you take it out, just check the biggest part of the chicken. Because if you get that, you know that's cooked, you know the rest of the chicken is not going to be cooked. Okay, cool. So, how have you got any advice for people who yeah. are a bit scared I mean, of using? Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. Here's here's a, a here's a good example. Okay, um, you've got the, you've got you've got a pan of uh, oil on the stove, um, and literally just get a piece of bread, chuck a piece of bread in there, and if it and if it comes up really too quickly and it burns, you know it's too hot. So what do you do to what do you do to cool it down? Just add a bit more add a bit more cold oil into it, or let it cool it naturally. And again, you can put a piece of bread in. If it starts to go up slowly then you know you're going to be getting some good golden brown chicken. Okay, cool. Um, again, mm -hmm. and again, don't be scared of it, okay? Like, and, uh, as long as you're following the normal rules, you know, hot oil is dangerous. But again, like, have confidence. Over mm -hmm. time, you're going to build up in the kitchen. And again, this is all part of the skills that any kind of young chef or, who, or whoever wants to kind of learn. It's just being a bit confident in what you do. And from there, you build. And can you, you said you can use a yeah, saucepan yeah, if you don't have that fire, is that right? It's completely fine. Okay, should we crack on with the next steps now? Yeah. Oh, actually, um, if you don't have semolina tapioca, yes. can you use regular flour? Um, plain flour? around the clock, uh, we use plain flour with that um, and get a beautiful crunch on that, and that's completely fine. Or if you wanted to, you can coat it in breadcrumbs, like Japanese panko breadcrumbs, and deep fry that way, okay? So you've got two free knuckles. Great. And I'm just using vegetable oil. Which oil are you using? vegetable oil. I don't want to use olive oil because it's too flavorsome, it will burn. Just a natural, clean oil is perfect. Cool? Okay, so let me put enough gloves on again. Okay, okay perfect, guys. So we'll come a bit closer. Yeah. So basically, chicken here into the flour. Give a nice coating on that and then pop it into here. Show me one. No egg, no, because you don't the, need egg or anything like the, that. Um, or... semolina and tapioca is going to stick to the chicken, okay? Cool. And make sure you can push down like that. Job's good, okay? And we're just going to do what we do at the restaurant five or six portions. I mean, five or six pieces, sorry, probably pieces. And while you're doing this, could you explain? You mentioned what around the clock. Yeah, what, so. Can you explain um, what that is? So, of course, when kind of the pandemic happened back in late March, we had to close the restaurant, obviously. Um, and we weren't too sure with what the government were going to be helping us out with. So, we had a kind of concept that had been mulling through our minds for quite a bit of time. And I think if you looked at quite a few reviews online uh, from Fame Ashler, and Jay Rayner that they kind of really shouted out that I'm a Jamaican buttermilk chicken. So we kind of came up with the idea of doing basically fried chicken concepts. But the great thing about it was is because my buttermilk fried chicken, everyone knew about it. So it was an easy gateway for us to go on to like 
delivery Uber Eats and Slurp. And literally on a Tuesday we closed, and on the Thursday we were up and running on all three platforms. That was pretty phenomenal to do in 48 hours. And because um, we're an Upper Street Angel, um, it's really densely residential around this way. And uh, we have kind of a good following from our local residents. So we did really, really well from that. And um, we got some good reviews in in the papers. And um, on the menu, of course, we have our Jamaican jerk bun and our chicken. But again, we have like our uh, we have burgers on there. We have like fried chicken pieces. And we kind of really have some healthy sides. But I think some people, when you go out to eat, it can be really filling if you're just eating so much kind of fatty food. So again, we have like things like Asian slaw, smack cucumber, um, new potatoes and jerk butter and chicken butter. And um, yeah, it's gone really, really well. And off the back of that, um, we're looking at going into a place in East London next month. So people who want their fried chicken, you can get your fix, but that'll be now to later next month, basically. Yeah. Okay, so now if you look here, the chicken has been coated. Cool. And we're going to be going into the fryer, okay? Again, okay, into the fryer. Yeah. And just push away. I've got quite a lot of chicken here. But... So is, there, is there a sort of limit of the amount? Yeah, if you, come, if you come back to the fry now, of the amount of chicken, I mean, you can see us going pretty rapid. But again, it depends how big your saucepan is. You know what I mean? I mean, if you've got like a small regular saucepan, you're only going to put four pieces in there. Just because, and again, just fill up the fryer or fill up the pan, just a bit over halfway, okay? Just in case it did erupt, you know it's not going to boil over and then. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. should we go on to the Scotch Bonnet Jam? Yes, quickly, before, we got a question saying, yes, can, can you brine a whole chicken? And I would say 100% brine a chicken or a turkey. But brine, the, okay, so, for a turkey, depending on size, you go with the same, like I said, 10% salt of water. And then basically I would brine that for 24 hours mm -hmm. on a turkey. And a turkey crown, I'll brine for 24 hours. But then for like, say like a whole chicken that you've got from the supermarket or from the butchers, that's like 1.5, two kilos, brine that for 12 hours, okay? But then again, it's like, it's down to, it comes down to personal preference. Okay. Like you could, if you want to add thyme garlic rosemary aromats into it then flavors are going to bleed into it and honestly trust me brine your chicken and you'll never go back so even if you're just yes yes one million percent brine it trust me honestly it makes it juicy and one top tip i'll give you guys okay if you're cooking a whole chicken I mean, usually I'll do on a medium size, probably into large, like 124 hours. I'll cook it 200 degrees for one hour, okay? Then turn the chicken upside down. Cool? What that happens is all the juices from the carcass, from the bone, are now going to sit back into the breast and the legs. It makes it super moist. And trust me, try it, and you'll never go back. Great. And one more question before we go on to the jam. Um, did you mention the proportion of tapioca? No, and it was semolina? two parts of semolina, one part tapioca. So one kilo, 500. Okay. 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 Shall we get on to the bomb? Yes. So tell us okay, what the so uh, special jam is. This is a Scotch bonnet jam. Um, again, if you look at kind of Western New Food, or African food, you would really kind of talk about scotch bonnets um, and this is something I'm really proud to me i think if you look at scotch bonnets and look at chilies as a whole especially scotch bonnets they're absolute fire and they're not really enjoyable to eat I mean, sometimes people go and get hot pepper sauce and put a little bit on it, it burns it so i was like okay we need to really showcase scotch bonnets to make sure that they're kind of getting that heatness from it 
and a bit of acidity and a, and a bit and a bit of sweetness. So I'm not going to give you the recipe away because this is my secret recipe. But um, one thing I'd just tell you guys to do is to get the Scotch bonnets and just to burn them. All that happens is you're just bringing out the natural sugars of the Scotch bonnet. And then from there, like, I'm not going to say no more, unfortunately, because I don't want to give away my recipe. But um, Can you say no, you can burn them on, on, on the hot and, and that and kind of brings out the natural the kind of sugars of the Scotch bonnet. And again, it kind of brings that kind of burnt tinge to it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really say what else is in it because it's my secret recipe. Hopefully. So what, um, what alternatives? Uh, what alternatives people? would I say? Like, for example, you could get like Sriracha. But I tell you what's a great company as well is if you've heard of Sauce Shop. If not, they do some absolute bangers of sauces. And um, yeah, I mean, they do a beautiful Sriracha. They do a honey Sriracha. Um, they do the everyday chili sauce. So, you know, um, like your chili sauce you get at the kebab shop. They're an absolute banger. But again, it's um, you could use chipotle, it's down to you, or you can just try and make your, your basically your scotch bonnet sauce. But again, I just can't be too much away on it. But what goes in it, I can't say. <laughs> Sorry. And it, it's a, it's a, it's yeah, so, so you've got like as well, it's a nice cool. sweetness, nice bit of acidity and the heatness of the chili that goes into it and um this is what kind of really makes a dish because people think of scotch bonnet jam and think okay this is going to blow my head off when you have it you kind of get that sweetness to it and then the second component that goes on it is uh it's literally corn nuts so again you can find that like on the world food mm -hmm. aisle and basically these are literally just corn nuts that literally have just been blended up it gives it like a nice little texture to it and again you can find ones that are like lemon corn nuts or like chili corn nuts again whatever is personal preference to yourself just have a go on it and give it a go and then a little bit of um freshness again just coriander crisp but again you could just use just use coriander but again like let's have a look at this like if you wanted to do like sorry, if you want to do like korean buttermilk chicken you could just get korean red pepper do the same process as what I've done now. And then basically just get like some mint leaves, mm -hmm. some um, some sriracha and some peanuts. Again, you don't have to use corn nuts. You can use peanuts, hazelnuts, walnuts, whatever kind of nut you desire. So for people who know, what do the corn nuts taste like? Popcorn. Popcorn. It's like popcorn, basically. It's like imagine before like the actual kernel was kind of okay. cooked in the pan. It's basically like a dehydrated kernel basically and um, it's got loads of spices in it. Um, but give it a go, honestly. They're super healthy and really Moorish. So obviously give it a go. Okay, so Great. we're gonna start looking at plating up now. Let me just move this out of the way. Do you have to, do you just leave the chicken or do you have to sort of do anything? No, 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 like, I fine. mean, literally, if you look now, like I can show you, it's golden brown. That needs about another one, another minute in there. And happy days. At least we'll let it drain off. And then we're going to get to the most exciting bit now. The same thing I do every day, eat chicken. <laughs> How many portions do you make I mean, a day? At the restaurant now, I mean, Touch words. I think the great thing about it, Tom, is we've stayed completely relevant through COVID, and I think, um, and we've been, and touch words, we've been busy every night since kind of we opened back up at the, about the 23rd of August. And like the amount of chicken, every single customer that comes in will have chicken. So, for example, we'll probably go through about 30 kilos of chicken a week. That's a lot of chicken. Yeah, yeah. Wow, because you're actually doing a tasting. Yeah, menu, so so. Sort of I would like we take we change the, we change the menu every month. Uh, we try to stick in season, and also try to bring my my roots and emphasize my heritage, where I'm from. 
but again like to kick you off basically is you're going to have this great bowl by my chicken and it's just gonna you're gonna sit down make you feel super relaxed the staff are absolutely amazing i mean we have so many great foods from our staff and um you're in for a good time and it's super affordable as well it's only 35 pounds for five courses so i like it and how how um you know some people might be unused to seeing fried chicken in a sort of more fine dining menu um how, um, you know, how do you think that works well this is something that's like super proud that it's like it's my signature dish and i think this day and age i think people are so interested in food and i think i want people to come to the restaurant with no kind of thought about okay i mean no expectations come to the restaurant and hopefully fingers crossed will blow your food, will blow your mind away and the great thing about it is like so you have the jerk chicken that's like really full of spice but the next course that we've got on the menu is that's super delicate. So it's like it's a seaweed cracker with oyster mayo and dill mayonnaise with bacon on. Mm. And like that is the reason we have that dish is really so it cuts through and recharges and restarts like your kind of your course your meal mm. again. Um, and, and yeah, I'm super proud of what we produce right now, 1251. Proud of the team and uh, yeah. Okay. So we have we have a question on how to tell when yeah, okay, perfect. So fully cooked fruit. If you come over here, I mean, I can show you the chicken now. I mean, I want to take the biggest piece of chicken out that you can see there. Okay, perfect. And again, if I'm just going to come down to my board, give it a cut. And again, I've just cut the biggest piece of chicken. So if you can see there, if the biggest piece of chicken is cooked, you, you know the rest of the chicken is going to be cooked as well. Cool? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so literally yeah. now I'm going to drain the chicken. And look, you can hear, well, I don't know, you can hear like how crispy it is. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now literally, just cut. And sorry, quickly, if someone doesn't have one of those um, baskets, do, could they leave yeah, them exactly. in the kitchen towel? Yeah, exactly. If you want to leave them in the kitchen towel, just got blue paper. Try or just kitchen towel, fine. Completely fine. Mm -hmm. Or a J cloth, it's okay. fine. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, portion there. And again, it, like I said, you may not like a spice, so it's, it's personal preference, really. Um, so, literally, chicken in. A little blob of scotch bonnet jam. So, uh, just a comment. Some people have said that this recipe is different to what is online on the website. So, we will be sending out this recipe as well soon. Um, it's slightly different. Um, just to let people know. Okay, so, yeah, cool. And then literally, that. like I'll tell you why it's different. Because before mm. before lockdown, okay, I was just doing my chicken just in butter. I was just literally getting the chicken chopped, putting salt in there, and putting it in butter milk and jerk spice, and leaving it forty eight hours. But because I was like, okay, I want to make the basically the best mm -hmm. buttermilk chicken, we've now brined it. After basically after around the clock, so that's yeah. why it's a bit different. Yeah, exactly. yeah I'm experimenting more. The chicken and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm super happy with now. Okay, so basically, okay, down. Can you see it? So basically, we've got yeah, looks amazing. My signature dish: the Jamaican jerk buttermilk fried chicken. Scotch bonnet jam, corn nuts, and coriander. And it's making my mouth water thinking about it. Well, I think you've got you to have a bite. <laughs> you can, you can hear the about, You know what, Tom? I've probably gone through maybe two, three tons of fried chicken in the last two years. I still never get bored of eating it, honestly. 
I never ever get blue. I don't think any day I think, oh no, there's a bit of chicken running around, I eat it. And it's just because it's what people love. You know, people love that nostalgia, people love that comforting food. And um, that's why I'll never ever leave my menu. So, how does yours compare to Morley's? <laughs> um, Morley's, I've got a soft, I've got a soft spot for Morley's, but yeah, my fried chicken all the way, mate. Even, even though probably tonight I will go home, still go there, and I'll probably pop, walk past Morley's and probably pick up like four chicken wings yeah. for a pound. Just because you know what, I love, I love to sit in there basically nice. after like a long day's work, watching all the walks of life come in, and just chill out and eat some fried chicken, and it's dirt cheap as well. Mm. We've got a few questions. Um, a couple on, you know, suggestions for other things to eat it with. Um, you mentioned coleslaw before. Do you have any um, other suggestions? I mean, you could do like a beautiful, like kind of. It's a coleslaw again, but it's a bit different to normal coleslaw. Like you do, like kind of like Asian coleslaw. So you would use like red cabbage, carrot, cucumber. But then mix it with like fish sauce, soy, mirin, chilies, example. So it's really super clean and fresh. Or for example, you could do like, again, you could do like a radish salad. So you could do like Tokyo radish, daikon, normal radish, shave that really thin. That with a bit of salt and a bit of vinegar. Because also when you have, think about it, when you have something fried, okay, there's two ways about it. You can have something fried, okay, then you can have something really rich to go with it. So we could have like, chicken we could have chicken fat mashed potato with crispy chicken skin on there again that's really nice but for me i want someone to cut through richness anything i can do at a restaurant but a rich piece of bit of meat i want someone to cut through that so for me if i'm having fried chicken i want that acidity to kind of cut through that so i love to involve vinegars or lemon juices in any kind of type of vegetables basically to go with it because that's my personal preference that's what i love because again fried chicken is can be quite unhealthy so I think if you have something healthy on the side of it, it doesn't, it doesn't make it feel too bad. And obviously yeah. you can have it in a burger and as well. And the place the next month, basically. But yeah, you can have it in a burger as well, yeah, for sure. Could you, could someone do the same thing, but with a, you know, a whole um, breast and have that as a burger? Would that, because um, eyes tends to be a bit more tender, doesn't it? I would definitely say, sorry, I can't stop eating um, I'd always say use a fly for sure. I mean, you could use a press, but again, if you want to tenderize it, literally butterfly open, put it between two bits of cling film, and then just use like a rolling pin or a pan to tenderize it. That's another way that you can basically get tender chicken and then brine that if you wanted to. But again, it's kind of personal preference in a day. I think in a day, if you follow the steps of brining, buttermilk, cone it in that flour or using plain flour, and follow the processes, you're going to get a beautiful piece of chicken. Yeah. And um, we've got a question about the salt. So do you use just any old salt cheap, for the brine? Cheap, or table, cheap table salt. Does it have to be special salt? Cheap table salt is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a question asking you to include the recipe for Scotch bonnet jam. Um, I uh, <laughs> think you want to keep that. Secret. Grave, so no one's going to know that recipe, basically. Sorry about that. And um, potatoes, is there a good potato dish? Chips, would it be good with chips? Yeah, or for the game, please. Is there any good potato dish? That Didn't hear you there, sorry. Sorry? Sorry, um, would it be good with chips um, or any other potato dish? Okay, so you could do it with chips, but you could pimp up your chips. So for example, you could do like a little jerk sauce with it. So literally just get some jerk spice and salt, mix that together. Or you could make, I mean, I think if you can add chicken element into chips, then it's like double bonjour, basically. So, I mean, you could do like chicken skin. So, I mean, you could literally go, so for example, okay, looking like this, okay, you go to your supermarket, you get your chicken thighs, you take the skin off the chicken thigh, you take the bone out of it, obviously, okay? The chicken skin, you can literally just cook in the oven. On about 160, about 20 minutes, it goes up. So you can basically shave that up, mix that with your fries, and all the fat that's come off that chicken, okay? You can literally, you're not gonna get much of it, you're gonna get maybe like a small little pot of that, like half pot of that, 
when you've done your chips, just toss it in that chicken fat with the chicken skin, a little bit of salt, a little bit of jerk spice, good to go. Or if you wanted to, the mashed potato, the same process that I said to you with the chicken skin, put that chicken fat instead of butter into your mashed potato, then basically chicken skin on top, then a little pot of chicken gravy that you can mix in. Sounds really nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, and in terms of the actual chicken, I mean, does it make a difference if people buy, you know, higher welfare or better quality? And does it actually make a yeah, difference 100%. to the end result? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question is, do you drain the brine? Yes, I do, 100%. Yeah. In drain, it, drain it in colander for like a minute or two minutes or so, then put it into your buttermilk and your jerk spice or whatever spice you're using. Mm. Cool. And yeah, I mean, the restaurant is open, open moment, from it's open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evenings, and um, Friday, Saturday lunch and dinner, and Sunday yeah. lunch. Sunday lunch, we do like an absolute banging roast. We do like a a fifty two day aged uh, sirloin with like truffle, cauliflower, cheese, beef drip, roast potatoes. Burnt has to be kept honestly. Like for me, roast dinner is one of my favorite things to eat. Half of butter and fried chicken, and then. Um, yeah. And that, and it can, ne it can never beat your mum's roast yeah. dinner. But I was like, for me, it's something I'm super proud that I used to have every Sunday, obviously. So um, we do a really beautiful roast, and then through the rest of the week, we do just a five course tasting menu for 35 quid, and you get your buttermilk chicken on there as well. And if you can only eat roast or fried chicken for the rest of your life, which would it be? Whoever said that was a good question. Um, God. Um, that's, oh, that's a really hard one. Um, fried, fried chicken, I guess. I guess. I mean, that's probably one of the hardest questions I've asked, basically. But yeah, I'll say fried chicken. Uh, we got a question. Um, someone says, I have eggs, flour, and breadcrumbs as originally recommended. Should I now leave out the eggs and breadcrumbs? I didn't um, brine, just the buttermilk step. Yeah, leave it out. Yeah. Literally, just brine to so, acid of buttermilk or yogurt, and then into flour, or you can use breadcrumbs, or you can use tapioca and starch, tapioca and semolina. Could you use... So you wouldn't do the flour, then eggs, then breadcrumbs, or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, it becomes too much batter. Okay. Or... Mm. Sorry about that. Yeah. Someone gave me the wrong recipe. I apologize. And <laughs> and how did you come up with the tapioca? How did I come up with it? Alina? Yeah, so um, I um, originally That's worked like... with Isaac and James Lowe when they were upstairs at Ten Bells. Before they went on to Clover Club and um, Lyles, and um, I basically learned the recipe from those guys basically, and um, I just took that with me because I knew it was bagging. Um, there's a question saying instead of the jam, could you please include some recipes for the garnish? Uh, you mentioned daikon, radish, etc. Um, a recipe for something like that, yeah, 100%. Would you be able to provide? I could do, yeah, not a problem at all. Um, I guess I'll speak to you after Tom, I guess, and we can get that up online for sure. But no problem at all. Mm. Great. And you mentioned that the fried chicken will be available in, you know, yeah, other so, uh, locations. Yeah, I don't want to kind of give away yet, but that. we're going to East London um, and we hope to launch it mid November, end November. It's just going to be some absolute bangers of fried chicken on there. Again, some healthy size. Then on a Sunday, we're gonna do an awesome roast chicken. So again, when people are asking about Brian and the chicken, come down, give it a go, give it a try. We're gonna be using some beautiful organic chicken with beautiful sides. Um, and that's really kind of the concept around that, basically. Great, and is that sort of a, a franchising? Or um, is it, no, 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 not at the moment, no. Are you no planning I think, to at this present moment, the hospitality has been hit so hard and we just want to kind of grow it really kind of organically and I would never want to go to bricks and more and invest money when it's mm. the worst time to do it. 
So literally, we're just going to be collaborating uh, with a can't say anymore, and just seeing how that grows. Cool. And um, someone's saying here the recipe suggests breadcrumbs are mixed with flour. Could we use no. breadcrumbs and semolina? No, trust me, sorry. Just best off, literally, just coating the chicken just in flour and deep frying it. So literally, in the buttermilk, you just coat it into flour, okay. deep fry, you still get a bang and crunch in it. And what happens if you just use the, the, the semolina with the breadcrumbs? It's, not, it's just not, I've never done it before, but trust me, it's not going to work. You're not going to get what you want, basically. You're better off even just putting flour, <laughs> egg, than breadcrumbs deep fried. Yeah, well, thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, I'm very jealous that I'm not eating the fried chicken at the moment. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Very much Cheers, take care. Peace.